Hey there. This is uh, my latest guitar that I put together. It's kind of like number 23. It's a tenor guitar. It's a Telecaster as well, but it's kind of not really those things. Uh, and I'll go over why in a second here. This one really took a long time to put together. I started off with sketches back in March, I believe, and the client reached out in January or February. So a good nine or 10 months ago, we started conceptualizing this build. I moved in the meantime, and it took a long time to get the parts to come together and find the right woods and, you know, uh, finding a place to do all my woodworking as well was difficult since I lost my shop and now I work out of a community place. Um, but all that put together took, meant that it took a long time to put this particular guitar together. But it's together now and it sounds and it looks really awesome. I'm so happy with this, this build. And I think the client's gonna be really excited about it too. I know they can't wait to get their hands on it to play it. Let's call it number 23. This is build number 23 in that case. It's, there's a lot of differences based on my like previous ones. Like this one here, that was a bit more custom for myself. This one's a bit more of a standard one for me. And right off the back here, you can see like, almost everything is different. For the design of this one, the client wanted a few things that I've never done. First of all, it was a Starcaster, sort of a offset, semi-hollow vibe that we wanted with this one. So we got the headstock uh, that we wanted and we got, got the design down pretty early on and we liked it and I think it looks really awesome here. The tuners are easy to access up top all the way and the, the, just the look of it is really on point. The body shape is an offset as you can tell here, like the waists come together at different points so it's a very comfortable to play, guitar to play sitting down. And the semi-hollow was a, a challenge for me for sure. I ended up doing sort of a butcher block back here out of roasted maple. So there's maybe 12, 10 or 12 uh, strips of maple glued together to make that original slab. And then while that was apart, I hollowed out a bunch of material around here, like you would generally. There's was a big block around the pickups and around the, um, the bridge here as well but most of the rest of the stuff is wide open inside. You can even see that looking inside that it's, um, it's hollow inside. And tapping in different places will give you different resonances as well, like, like it does on the semi-hollow. So that design took a while to figure out like the whole process of putting it together and you know how I would do all that. But I'm happy I took the time to, to look at all of these parts because uh, I really like the way this, this one has come together. It's a lot of hours of work, but a lot of satisfaction as well. Another part of the design for this one was the individual bridges because we wanted a wider string spacing than what I usually do. On my usual bridges here, they're about 10 millimeters from pole to pole, uh, sorry, from uh, saddle to saddle. Same thing here, around 10 millimeters. But here we end up with around 12 or 13 millimeters because of the, the size that the client wanted. We're at 38 millimeters here, tapering to 42. So uh, over here, that meant about 12 millimeters thereabouts. <clears throat> so individual string saddles were the only way that we could do that from what I could find at least and like I, I really like the look of it too it was fun to experiment with that but that was certainly another design difference from what I usually do another thing that I had to make was this individual custom backplate here for the, all the electronics so it is easy to work on all this stuff a lot of semi hollows are kind of hard to get inside and get your wires to the right spot but this one is easy to work on. I, I wired it up and I, I thought it was pretty easy. Uh, unlike my other guitars here, so quite happy with that. So once we had the design figured out here, it was time to build the guitar. Uh, and we wanted roasted maple and maple. We wanted local woods. We wanted no plastics in this build at all, as per the client's request. And local woods if possible, things that are sourced locally. So um, I'm lucky here in New Brunswick to have a lot of maple. And there's also a, um, a roaster, a wood torrification place in Bathurst called uh, Thermal Wood Canada. And I was able to get a lot of woods from them, not directly, but through one of their retailers. So all of the maple, pretty much everything you see here, all of the roasted woods are from New Brunswick and they're from Thermal Woods. This contrast piece of uh, maple here, the, the blonder pieces here, and the fret markers here are also maple. Uh, I'm not just not sure where that maple was from when I bought it. It just said maple, so it could be anywhere from you know central Canada down to like you know eastern seaboard of the, the 
the states or the Maritimes, I just don't really know. But let's say 97% of the wood in this build was from New Brunswick, locally sourced, and um, yeah, that was a, a request that the client had. For the no plastic part of this build, I thought that was pretty challenging and like a really good thick goal to have. Um, so even going into shipping, we're looking at not using plastics in there and it's, it's, it's a little difficult, but you know, it's not the end of, it's, it's, it's doable. I really like that goal as well, it aligns with my values. Uh, it just meant we had to look a little bit elsewhere for some of our pieces, specifically the, the pickups and the wiring and the routing and all that stuff, like we had to ask uh, Chris over at Pig City Pickups to make these pick, uh, pickups for us and to use the metal wire and not the plastic wire. And there's still some plastic inside of it for sure, but it's it, we, we reduced it as much as possible. <clears throat> for the materials on this one, like I said, Thermal Wood had supplied us with the, the nice roasted maple for this. Uh, we used some Goto uh, locking tuners in the back here. So there is a lock here they can loosen and tighten to make the string, um, to attach the string to the po string post here. And they're also staggered, so I don't need a string tree here to, to have the right break angle over the nut. That's a really nice set of kit here. Uh, I really enjoy it, I wanna use this again. It's, they're really good tuners. We have a truss rod running down the middle as usual. We have a bow nut here. The bow nut really helps with like a, just giving a better sound I find on the open strings. The plastics that you get sometimes are just kind of muffled and don't sound great. But bone is very hard wearing, it sounds great. Probably won't ever have to change this unless we're changing string gauges quite drastically on this guitar. We have 21 frets, 22 frets uh, here. These are vintage style frets, so they're kind of a medium, they're not a jumbo fret, they're like a medium width and with medium height. A lot of years of use out of them for sure, but they may have to be changed at some point. That's further down the line. Uh, we did a uh, fret markers here out of this regular unroasted plain maple. And there's a bigger one here at the 12th and come, that wraps around to the side as well here. So you can see there's all the markers plainly visible to the player and also the person watching the player play. This neck also had the um, what did I call it before? The pseudo one piece neck where I took the fretboard and the neck material from the same piece of wood. So basically I sliced off the top piece for the fretboard, opened it up, put the truss rod in, cut the channel, the, 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 the slots for the frets and everything and put it back on. So it looks like a one piece neck pretty much. It's hard to find the glue line and the grain match is pretty great overall. <clears throat> There's a few spots where you can definitely see it's glued back on and you know, of course you can see it and the truss rod here, but from the side, from both sides here, it looks really awesome. I really like that I kind of figured out how to do that. In the back here, we have three of these rather large string ferrules to hold the neck on. It also makes it easy to take it on and off and do any work that you want to do on the guitar. So always, this, um, I always kind of prefer these um, bolt-on necks. In the guitar itself here, we also have our plate like we talked about here. These pickups are from Chris uh, at Peg City Pickups, a uh, really great person to work with, really fast on the emails. I'm uh, working on, with him on another build later. And these pickups sound really amazing. They're the Dark Firebird set uh, on his website. Um, and they they were really easy to work with. They were well labeled and everything. Like it, it was just a dream to work with and really honored to be able to have those on this build. We have these individual bridges, like I mentioned before. These are from Music Lily, I think, on Amazon. Really good quality, though. They're Amazon product, they're not super custom, but uh, I really like them a lot. They really look awesome. And it was kind of fun to learn the different intonation styles on this, but it's still pretty intuitive. For the volume here, we have a, uh, like a blend potentiometer here, I think it's called. So there's basically two potentiometers on it. There's, and there's a little notch in the middle. So basically when you're in the middle and you feel that notch, you, both the volumes are 100%. And then when you go all the way right, it's 100% on the, on the neck, but zero on the bridge. And then you're blending both pickups in and out of each other. So when you're all the way counterclockwise, it's only the bridge and not the neck. 
and then there's a bunch of in-between settings too. So it's a little bit more fine-grained than just a regular pickup switch, but there's no master volume of switch on it, so that's kind of the trade-off of this design. We have a tone pot here, a pretty standard thing, just uh, from a bright to a dark setting, nothing very, very exciting. <laughs> uh, we have a pure tone potentiometer, uh, sorry, pure tone uh, output jack in here, so that's like the best that you can buy, I find on the market these days, and it's what I put in all my guitars. And just a classic, like, little circular um, electrostat, no, electro, I forget what they call this, but the nice circular output jack here. And we also have two little strap pins here. So that's it for this one, let's call it number 23. This one's going off to uh, Toronto, um, and super happy, super impressed with this piece of this guitar here. Forget to mention as well, the tuning on this one was a little funny. So this is basically a guitar tuning, but minus the E and the A, sorry, the A and the D string. So we have basically like first, second, third, and sixth string. So if we're looking at it on a normal guitar here, we have the first string, the E string, and then the top three strings. So E and then G, B, A, G, B, E. And that was from a, a request by the client as well, of course. That's it for number 23. Please enjoy. I'll have a demonstration video up shortly as well. Thank you.